In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at some potential tropical activity, in my opinion, along the eastern United States and the Gulf of Mexico. Even if not, I think this vid video will be educational, so keep that in mind as well. But we're looking at the temperatures right now, and they're very, very ripe. The reason why we're making this video today is, one, for the next three days, we don't have any major threats of severe weather. I still want you guys to heed every watch, warning, and advisory, but... Uh, for the most part, the highest risk we have over the next three days is a marginal level one risk. Uh, so I felt like this was a good time to go ahead and uh, take a look at the tropics. The other reason is because I actually do see a lot of activity uh, lining up, especially I'm going to show you here in a minute, but uh, especially along this area here. We're going to see because of some cold air taking place in the United States, uh, a lot of our activity is going to be shoved southward offshore of the southeast and uh, kind of the eastern Gulf of Mexico here. And in June, this is actually a pretty prime place. A lot of times we'll see some tropical activity start out uh, over here and uh, track eastward during the month of June and even July. We see this oftentimes. Something like this is a very common track uh, or kind of originating off the east coast of Florida and then heading up the east coast as well. Uh, usually we don't get any uh, main development region uh, storms starting up so they don't start off in Africa this time of year oftentimes uh, we get them very close to the United States starting out uh, this time of year typically that's not to say every time but typically we can see that there is temperatures that are exceeding normal by far uh, about one to two maybe even three degrees above average Celsius here that puts us at probably uh, July temperatures as opposed to June temperatures in a lot of these areas. So definitely a far, far stretch from what is typical. Uh, and if we we're to take a look at the actual temperatures in here, uh, of course we do have some pretty cold temperatures in some spots, especially as you were to work your way offshore here uh, near Bermuda, uh, a lot closer to the Carolina coast we have some cooler temperatures. However, uh, near the west coast of Florida, temperatures are sufficient. And some of these along the Gulf Stream here uh, would probably be sufficient for some activity that is a very narrow band but if we get a very specific track we could likely see some development as far north as offshore of south carolina and north carolina here i would suppose uh, but especially in these southern areas this is definitely warm enough uh, to support tropical development now of course we're going to walk through our overall upcoming patterns we're going to do that but i want to uh, let you guys know and i'll remind you later but just keep an eye on this area because right now all of our activity is up here as you can see uh, but again, we're going to see this kind of uh, line of storms just get shoved southward. So they're going to start out here, and they're going to get shoved to where they're eventually offshore uh, of those kind of southeast and Gulf states. Now, let's move towards tomorrow. I want to just start out for Thursday on June 6th. And we see a lot of activity along the eastern seaboard here, as well as the Gulf Coast. So this is where a lot of your activity is. So it is pretty far south already. That is for Thursday on the 6th. Friday the 7th, things get a little bit quieter. Uh, we do have some activity up here near the Gulf Coast, uh, Gulf Coast, the Great Lakes here, better yet, the Northeast as well. Uh, and then there is some isolated activity from the Rockies into the Plains states. As we keep going towards Saturday on the 8th, we see that things are still pretty slow. We do see some activity across these middle portions and for a lot of your uh, kind of upper Midwest into the Northeast areas. Still not seeing any signs of tropical activity Here's the beginning signs. This is when we're starting to see things dip down, as I've mentioned a couple of times. Sunday on the 9th, we see a lot of our thunderstorm activity is across the eastern four corner states, uh, the south central states, even into some of the Gulf states, and then expanding up into the northeast. Uh, but as we move towards Monday, we see this kind of just slip southeastward. This is when things are getting very, very interesting. The, the kind of heart of your activity is in here, but we are beginning to see a lot of activity expand from kind of Central America and the Southern Caribbean uh, northward up here close to the western coast of Florida. Uh, so activity being in this area, again, I'm going to revert back to this screen. Uh, I have to kind of redraw this, but this area is very, very warm. Uh, around 30 degrees Celsius in some spots in here, which is extremely warm water, of course. Uh, so as this activity uh, is spreading into this area, we have to imagine that there is plenty of potential for development here, uh, but it is still very far out, five days. We're going to take a look at things like shear, uh, not in this video, but as we take a look later on so we can really break down the potential. I'm more pointing out the long-term potential of activity in here. We'll see that this is not going to be just a one-time thing uh, across these model runs. So let's move towards Tuesday. 
Uh, and look at this. We get a lot of activity still off the west coast of Florida, but now off the southeast as well, we're seeing a lot of activity in here, which is going to increase chances of development across both of these areas, of course, even a low pressure system near the southeast coast of North Carolina. As we keep going towards Wednesday, we see that system all moves up offshore, basically said and done. Uh, but we get another round of potential tropical activity here around Florida, both on the eastern and western ends. Typically, this would either be the west or the east. It wouldn't be both. So likely, I would say here, the west would develop. And then again, something like this would be a likely track, could even track inland. We see a lot of storms do uh, inland tracks this time of year as well. Obviously, that holds back some of the potential, but can be big time rainmakers for the east coast. Let's keep going towards Thursday. Still a lot of activity and some very sketchy areas to see it. And then by Friday, uh, a lot of a lot of it is still here, honestly. Uh, we see, again, activity on the, both the west and eastern sides of Florida. Just not what you want to see when the sea surface temperatures look like this. Uh, this is much closer to July, August sea surface temperatures, which is usually, you know, more active in the tropics. So uh, just expect things. I mean, in June, we typically do see sometimes some activity like this. Uh, that does develop june is not too early for that to be normal uh but this is just you know with the sea surface temperatures in mind has more potential than a typical early june to mid-june time frame i would say as we take a look at the long range i just want to see this ai european model we get a lot of uh that activity here from basically the 10th we see it starting out here again near the coast of florida the west coast of florida uh, we see that really just sticking around wednesday thursday friday there uh, but here's the concerning thing. Once we get past that hours 240, which is what the European model, this model, goes out to. So this is the maximum we get here, hours 240. This one can go way further. Uh, what we start to get is very interesting because we initially on both these models get this activity near the coast of Florida that wants to move up. But later on, what we're going to see is just a full-blown uh, barrage of activity trying to move in from the Caribbean uh, towards the Gulf Coast, which is very interesting and I would say unseasonable for this time of year. Uh, typically, look at that flow we get uh, from the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. And look, we start to see some potential uh, systems both near the Yucatan Peninsula here near Cozumel, Mexico. And then right there in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, we have two uh, potential systems to watch. So uh, the tropics are waking up and this is much earlier than normal because of just the pure amount and some of the types of activity that we're seeing here. I would say a lot of this is unseasonable uh, and very abnormal. And that's probably due to the very unseasonable and abnormal sea surface temperatures that we have in place. That's likely the, the leading cause here uh, is what I would assume. Uh, and as we take a look at the total precipitation on our typical European model, uh, we get a lot of east coast and gulf activity here and caribbean i mean look at all the activity out here but you notice the hot spot is right here in this pocket and the flow is just like this i expect some potential tropical activity to take place in here not saying it's going to develop but there is going to be a lot of chances in here to say the least anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video i'm very excited to finally be talking about the tropics unfortunately it's much earlier than normal and uh, very concerning just because of how uh, poised this, this year seems for tropical activity. Uh, anyway, be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.